Okay, so I'm going to teach you a real quick uh, lesson on how to make a small box. Uh, small because we can only print so large on our 3D printer bed, and small also because it keeps the time to print the object down. So uh, we have done round boxes in the past, which are kind of neat, but since they give us polygons here, I'm going to drag a polygon from the basic shapes thing and then make that go away so I have more room. Um, first thing I'm going to notice is it goes, darn it, to, uh, to millimeters. I'm going to go to edit grid down here and change my grid units to inches because I think better in inches. If you want to stay in millimeters, I suppose you can. Right now it's giving me some kind of weird measurements. Uh, I'm going to make this, I believe it's two by... Two. So when I click on that box and it highlights it, whatever I type in there makes it that big. So I now have a two inch by two inch hexagon. And uh, let's see, maybe I'll make it about 1.5 inches tall. So this is a pretty small box, but you could probably fit things like, uh, you know, some earrings or guitar picks or a little bit of change in there. And uh, it won't take us forever to, uh, to print it. It won't use a ton of material. Um, so anyway, there's my <coughs> hexagon, and again, it is even on both of those sides, and it is one and a half inches tall. Um, you know what? Yeah, no, that's fine. One and a half inches is good. Uh, uh, the first thing, to make a box, it must become hollow. So what I'm going to do is go back to my shapes, grab another polygon, and drag it in, and do pretty much the same thing, except I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. So instead of two, I'm going to make it 1.75. Make this 1.75. And if I rotate it, I'll make this uh, 1.75, because I want it to stick out a little bit above this guy here. Um, so what I've done is I've made a slightly smaller hexagon. Um, slightly taller hexagon. And uh, what I'm going to do is click on the shape generator here, and I'm going to turn that into a hole. And now I'm going to drag my hole over to this guy and try to fit him in here. Now, fitting him in here can be a little bit of tricky. Uh, you got to change your view a bunch of times, and sometimes it doesn't work all that well. What you can do is highlight this, click here on the align tool. When you click on this one, and this one, and make sure it's perfectly centered, and that this rim around the outside of the box is even all the way around. Depending upon your perspective, it might not look that way, but apparently it is. Uh, then I'll click out of that, and I'll click this guy, and drag him up just a little bit. You can see down here, there's arrows that tell me how high I'm lifting that shape off of this work plane here. And I just want like an eighth of an inch on the bottom of my box. So, you know, if the hole goes all the way through the box, you put something in it, it's going to fall right out. So by clicking on this little arrow point here and pulling it up and down, there it's a quarter inch high, but I don't need even that much. An eighth of an inch is fine, okay? Uh, now I want that to be one discrete object, so I'm going to group it together. And when I rotate it around, you can see there it is. It's a hollow hexagonal box that is two inches by diameter uh, on either side and one and a half inches tall. Now I need to make a lid that's going to fit inside this hole uh, nice and tight so the box lid uh, fits in but doesn't fall right off either. So uh, here we go back to my polygon again. Click on it. This is going to be the bottom of my uh, polygon. So make it two by two. Maybe drag him a little closer so it'll fit nicely on my print bed. And this guy I want to only be a quarter inch tall or 0.25 inch tall. So this cap should fit directly over that guy, no problem. Now what I need is something that what we call being a little recessed. In other words, another slightly smaller polygon that's going to fit inside this rim here. So <clears throat> as before, grab another polygon, drag it over here. Uh, you know what? I'm going to work on him out here and then drag him in. Uh, I'm going to make this, because I know this is 1.75. I'm going to make this 1.7. And this, 
So this shape here is small enough it should fit right inside there quite uh, quite snugly. And uh, you know what I probably should have done first was make a work plane on this surface. I wonder if I can do this after the fact and then drag this guy onto it. Look at that. Wonders never cease. So even when I made a mistake, I kind of got lucky there. Uh, you can tell it's not really aligned so good. Uh, here, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure it's a little bit out of alignment. Grab these two guys, click on my align tool, and when I click here and here, it shifts it so that it has a nice even lip all the way around it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to switch my work plane back to the bottom. And again, these are all skills you should know how to do from your pr past uh, projects. When I talk about work planes and grouping and things, you should know exactly what I mean. Uh, here, I'm going to click here and make this guy 0.25. Seems to have shrunk the whole thing. I'm going to undo that. Make sure this is ungrouped. Group it. And then ungroup it. Because I just want to deal with this guy here. You know what? Let's make him. I keep referring to them as him. I don't know why I think my shapes are masculine. Um, let's move this shape over and make it 0.25. So, you know, as you can tell, obviously, sometimes you have to go backwards, right? Put my work plane on top of here, drag this guy over. Aha, maybe this needs to be a little bit taller. Instead of 0.25, let's make it 0.5. Still no, huh? All right, so here I am back with this uh, part that's going to be the inside of my lid. And I'm going to make that point. Oh, I'm going to click in the box. 0.5. So it's a little taller. What that means is when I drag it over here, and you can see that that's off by a little bit. But if I grab these two parts here, click on the align tool, and click this and this. Now that should be perfectly aligned. And it's going to stick up a quarter inch here, and my lid is going to be a quarter of an inch. And this is one and a half inches, so it'll be one and three quarters inches tall. Groovy. So now I have my lid and my box there. But now I want to customize it. I want to make it something that's kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to flip it upside down. And let's see if this is going to let me do what I want to here. We all know about the text thing here from when we made our name tag. If I put text on the bottom here and make it much smaller, can zoom in a little bit. Uh, let's see. It's kind of weird when you're doing something on the bottom. Again, it's so, you, so you can just see from a farther perspective is those letters are all happening underneath the lid. Okay. What I'm trying to do is I'm going to put my initials or something on there, maybe, uh, you know, GMS or dad. If I was going to give this as a gift to my father, maybe I'd do that. I'm going to highlight this and align it so that it's nice and centered. That looks a whole lot better. And I can change the text to be whatever I want it to. When you go into the shape here, I'm going to, uh, let's see, instead of, uh, yeah, we'll just say, uh, Oh, what should I do it? GMS. Okay. And what I want to do is now put a work plane on the bottom of the... Uh, pretty tricky here. There we go. On the bottom of the GMS. There we go. Get rid of this guy. It's kind of in my way. And now I want to move this guy up about halfway through my lid and change it to a hole. So when I highlight this together and group it, now when I turn it, you should be able to see that that is going to be recessed. In other words, there's going to be holes in the shape of the letters GMS there. Um, if I try to have them bump out from the lid, it's a lot harder to print it. So if you have it 
cutting into the little a, a bit, it's fine. Um, I'm going to switch my work plane back to here. See if that worked. Awesome. So now I've got my hexagonal box. I've got my lid with a recessed lid, which means it's going to fit inside there. It's got some initials or some, uh, some letters on the bottom of the lid that are embossed into it. Uh, negative space, if you've ever heard about that in art class. And one more thing, I'm going to pick one side of this box, maybe here, and I'm going to pick one more shape. And, uh, you know, some people like grabbing the little heart or the little star, what have you. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and take this star. Oop. Oh, you know what I should do? Ha! Work plane, huh? Uh, let's just put that guy there and then delete him. Um, <clears throat> going to put a work plane on the front here. And that's going to make it real easy to glue this star here. Okay. Going to make him a lot smaller. In fact, I click on the box and I make him one here and one here. I know I'll have a nice even star. Uh, let's see. It's on that plane. <clears throat> I'm just going to have to kind of slide it over here. Now, it looks like my star is a little bit off kilter here a little bit. If I use my, my compass here, I can go minus, I'll just go minus five degrees and enter. Oh, it went to the right. So I'm going to go 10 degrees. And that almost got it there. Let me do another 10 degrees. Oh, I guess it's got to be, we'll try 15 degrees. That looks like it's almost straight up and down. Maybe it's 17 degrees. Now, as I look at this, that looks pretty good. Oop, it's hanging off the edge a little bit, huh? I might have to make this guy a little bit smaller so he doesn't mess up my thing. Oh, maybe. Looks like it's going right to the edge of my the face of that polygon. Yeah, I think I'm good there. Um, I don't want this guy sticking out too far. So if I click here on this shape, instead of 0.39, make that oh, no more than a quarter of an inch, maybe 0.2 inches. So that's just going to stick out a little bit. If it sticks out too far, there's a very good chance it's going to sag while the 3D printer makes it. So there I've got the star on that side. You know what? I'm going to go even lower with that. I'm going to make that 0.125, which is an eighth of an inch. So it'll stick out just a little bit. I've got a cool looking star on there. I've got my GMS letters hollowed out in there. I'm going to grab my work plane and drag it back to the bottom because that just makes it look a little more normal to me. And by the way, I think you noticed up here, I already uh, named this Hexagon Box Tutorial. You would put your name, you know, Joey's Hex, hex Box. You can use Hex uh, for short, uh, something like that. And then uh, you know how to export .stl and then send it to your teacher for printing. Actually, I would show your teacher first just in case uh, there's a correction you need to make so you don't have to download it a bunch of times and there aren't two or three different versions. Uh, it's, it's annoying if the teacher prints the wrong version and then you have to print it over again because, you know, you misspelled your name or something silly like that. Uh, and then if I go into this here. All right, so here I am when I open it in the slicing program we call this. There we go. There's my hexagon box. You can see the star there. You can see the GMS under the bottom of it. I don't want the new version yet. And if I go to print it, it'll tell me how long it's going to take to print. And I'm going to guess. It's going to tell me in a second here how long it'll actually take for the printer to spit this thing out. Uh, which does matter when we have multiple students from uh, many classes trying to print all at about the same time uh, of the quarter. So we want to try and keep our prints to uh, certainly under two hours uh, or, or not much longer than that. More of the complex things. Had somebody tried to print a lobster or a robot once or uh, some kind of a Formula One car. And uh, boy, those prints were like three, three and a half, four hours, which means we'd only get to really print one thing in a day. Uh, that's pretty obnoxious, uh, kind of hogging the 3D printer, so to speak. 
Um, so right now the computer's thinking on this and trying to figure out how it's going to slice this thing up and tell the 3D printer how to do it. Two hours, 20 minutes, which is a little long, but it's not terrible. So I could probably print two or three of those in a day. Um, and I will print this out and show you a photograph of it at some point. All right.